Okay, so I am making this video after uh, the filming of the first video, and I will apologize. Uh, I looked at it later on, and uh, apparently my audio was a bit borked up because of the way I had everything plugged in and, and all that. But so, so I've gone through and proved that, made, made sure everything works, and uh, so, so it, it should be working properly now. Um, Anyways, so you can see my recording software here. I will dash that down. And we've got this beautiful wallpaper here of uh, a fictional voodoo variant that was in Strike Fighters 2. Anyways, so uh, so this video is about what is Strike Fighters I exactly. So to, to, to clarify, as we said in the first video, in the Let's Play series, uh, Blood Money, um, Strike Fighters is a sim light so it's a combat flight sim but it's a sim light which basically means that uh like i said before it's somewhere between an arcade sim and a study sim so uh it's not like ace combat which is uh, a very popular arcade sim where you're just gonna jump into a plane start shooting things down getting killed left and right stuff like that uh right off the bat uh that, that's that's not the kind of game it is however it's also not a study sim like dc like, like the popular dcs world uh, which is uh, very, very detailed and allows you, and you know, you, you read like a 400 page manual to learn how to fly a warthog in the game. And then, you know, if you can remember what you're supposed to do, you could like step into the cockpit of a, of a real A-10 warthog and, and actually start the plane up and, and fly it. Um, you know, if you could handle the G forces and all that, but you can actually start the plane and, and operate the systems and fly it if you're, if you're using the full fidelity modules in DCS. Well, no, granted, DCS World does have some uh, kind of sim light aircraft that you can play with, and a lot of its aircraft so far do have a kind of game mode where you can, uh, that, that is more sim light than study sim, but, uh, but for the most part, DCS World is a study sim. Um, and so, so Strike Fighters isn't that either. So Strike Fighters focuses on giving you the tools to play with a wide variety of planes, like the Voodoo here from the uh, late 50s, early to mid 60s, and and uh, so you can play all. So you can play bombers, you can play fighters, you, and there's there's a large variety of jets you can get going, and you can even get like World War II prop aircraft and or like more modern jet fighters from like the 80s and 90s, and. Uh, so, that, so that's what Strike Fighters is, and uh, basically it, it it doesn't focus on the exact specifics of each aircraft. What it does is it focuses on basic systems. So it's it's not as detailed and in depth as DCS World, but it's but there's you know more meat to it than like Ace Combat. And so uh, basically, like to operate the systems, you don't you don't go through a full engine start checklist. You just press Control I, and that will start your engine or shut off. That will start your engines or shut them off. Um, and generally, everything is operated from a series of key controls and joystick buttons and throttle buttons. If you have a joystick and throttle, but uh, it's designed so that you can you just use the keyboard to operate all of the major commands. And uh, so that, and you, all of the commands basically are broadly applicable across all of the different aircraft. You know, some some aircraft are somewhat unique with their systems, and there, there's some different things that go into flying and fighting with them. But generally, each aircraft has relatively accurate performance compared compared to the real what they know about the real life uh, aircraft and simplified, you know, like war fighting systems like radar, m weapons controls, all of those are, are relatively simplified. Um, and so that, that's what's cool about it, is that Strike Fighters is uh, a very, it's a very nice game because it's kind of a between point between like a game like, say, Ace Combat or like, like it's kind of like you know, the between point between like Ace Combat Seven or the Project Wingman Alpha demo that you can currently like get off uh, itch. Um, there, it's going to be available on Steam. It's still coming soon, so I, I don't know when it's coming, but I'm I'm excited for it since that's an Ace Combat arcade game. Um, but it's so it's not like Ace Com the Ace Combat series, but it's also you know so it's more detailed than that. But it's also uh, you know 
less detailed than DCS worlds. And so it's kind of a nice middle ground for people who want to move up from arcade games to play more with, you know, more realistic flight sims without needing to, but without need wanting, without, you know, getting into all of the detail and the bells and whistles and, and the, just the extremely, uh, the extreme fidelity that like DCS world offers. Um, and so that's nice. Now, uh, it is a, it is an older game. Uh, the series started in the Strike Fighter series started in I think it was 2002, and the last update to Strike Fighters 2 was a patch that came out in I think it was July. I know it was in 2013. I think it was in July. It was mid 2013 when the last patch came out, and since then the creator of uh, Strike Fighters has abandoned. It. And so, uh, from what I remember, from what I know, uh, from what little I know, Strike Fighters is a uh, one-man project. It's it's a it's a pretty good game, uh, and it's it's basically a one-man project made by uh, I I know he's often called TK by the community. I think that's his initials, and I'm he's he's his name sounds Asian, so I'm I'm pretty sure he's like Japanese or Korean or Vietnam, somewhere in there, um, maybe Chinese. Anyways, uh, and so I think from what, so he he runs Third Watch Dudes, and so he does he does still have a game that he's that he's been, you know, updating and working on, but that's kind of a uh, called Strike Fighters Modern Combat, but that's basically uh, you know, a a dumbed down, you know, arcade flight game for mobile systems like your tablet or your phone and and so it's uh, it in and, and he's he stated very emphatically and multiple times that uh, he's not coming back to Strike Fighters 2, which is you know, a bit of a bummer because there were there are some things about the game that aren't <laughs> terribly that that could do with a bit of fixing. Like for example, like s missiles like the AMRAM or the or the AIM-54 Phoenix that have their own onboard radar that you know fire and forget radar guided missiles. Uh, your the radar warning receiver for the AI and possibly for the player I, I haven't experienced it yet ha won't pick those up. And so you can, like fire radar guided Phoenix or AMRAM and that'll start guiding. But the the AI won't pick it up, and they'll just get slaughtered because because there a, there's a bug that where their RW where their radar warning receiver won't um, <laughs> won't detect that the radar from that missile, so which sucks. Yeah. And and then there's other little glitches and stuff. And the game is older, so the graphics aren't the greatest. Um, that, and and of course that that's something you just have to deal with. The graphics are the, the graphics and terrain are actually quite good for are actually decent for its time, and you can actually improve them so to look quite to look really quite nice for a game of its age, with some of the mods that you can get online for free. And uh, for example, Sarcasm version 2.0 beta. Um, I know that one's and it's it's slightly older. It's so it's not perfect, but uh, it's it's one of the mods that I use in my uh, mod pack that I'm that I'm using in my Let's Play and. It's uh, and, and so that one like updates the the skies and the clouds and and makes them look better and, and you can get like high quality uh, terrain tiles for your, for your maps and and stuff like that and make your maps look all pretty and stuff like that so there there's ways you can improve the look of the game but it's it's not gonna ever be like it's never gonna be the prettiest game around it's not it's never gonna match DCS World for like fidelity because like DCS World like has actual grass yeah. Yeah, that. Anyways, um, let's see what else do I want to talk about. Um, okay, so price. Um, Strike Fighters is was originally sold uh, in a series of smaller modules. So, uh, basically, based around each campaign. So, you, uh, a certain campaign. So, you had Strike Fighters Two, the ori the the uh, original Strike Fighters Two, which uh, was based around mercenary cam the mercenary campaigns in the fictional. Desert scenario between Daimar and Paran, um, which we are currently playing through in Blood Money. We just started that in the Blood Money series. Uh, then there was also Strike Fighters II Israel, which focused around the uh, Israeli campaigns, like the Six Day War and stuff like that. Strike Fighters II Vietnam, self-explanatory, and Strike Fighters II Europe, which focused around fictional Cold War scenarios between in. Germany between the Soviet Union and the and the NATO powers, and then there was also uh, Strike Fighters 2 North Atlantic, which 
was which added like carrier groups and also added like the F the F14 Tomcat the early, the F14A Tomcat the early model and uh, as well as uh, a map of Iceland that you could play around with and uh, so yeah it was and so generally you bought each of those models separate and then there was uh, two expansion packs that were separate and then 28 mo small DLC packs that you could buy and each DLC, small DLC pack would add new things like uh, like a new aircraft like a, like a one or two new aircraft stuff like that um, so all of that you generally had to buy separately that could be kind of expensive because they were generally about I think it's I think it's about thirty dollars per module per each of the main modules and I don't know if the expansion DLCs that the extra 28 expansion DLCs can be bought separately or not anymore anyways so a while ago there was like a new some time ago TK finally just collected all of the modules into one grouping all of the deal all both expansion packs all of the main modules all of the DLC ex all 28 DLC expansions and so he packed them all together into a single file that you could b purchase on his website uh, the only downside is that it's it's pretty expensive it's a hundred dollars to buy the game which is yeah that's that's a pretty big price point especially when you consider that if you're just getting into this you might need to buy a joystick which is gonna tack on about an extra forty dollars for a cheap one like the extreme 3d pro that I'm currently using which I, I really do love by the way for a, for a budget joystick is just really nice uh, of course mine's mine I've, I've heard of some people who have issues with the more modern ones mine's several years old and very lightly used so anyways uh, yeah so uh, price point wise you have to spend a hundred dollars to get all the modules now that's still uh, something of a deal uh, you're still saving money compared to buying all of the packs separately so if you're looking to get into strike fighters I would recommend just saving up for and buying the uh, the big uh, gold edition pack or whatever it's called I think it's something like the gold edition anyways uh, and, and that'll get you like I said that'll get you everything that was released for the strike fighters 2 series strike fighters 2 strike fighters 2 Israel Europe North Atlantic uh, Vietnam the both expansion packs and all 28 of the DLCs plus the plus it'll be updated to the latest batch and so that's good. And so the modding community has kind of taken over from TK, and they've added a lot of content that you can play around with, like new weapons, new aircraft, new maps, new uh, new improvements to maps from the stock game, uh, new campaigns uh, or new missions and campaigns to play with, uh, new skins for different aircraft, all all kinds of stuff. Um, and they've done quite a lot in uh, but there, but there are limitations to what they can do because uh, Strike Fighters 2 is is a game that is that can be modded, but it's not built so that all of the files are open. So for ex I believe, from what I've read, that the files were originally all open for editing, uh, including the source code located in the DLL files that uh, that formed the core of the game. Uh, but after, from what I understand, some some groups started using assets from from Strike Fighters 2, and TK got uh, very upset about that, and so he start he uh, started stopping development of Strike Fighters 2. It's like I said, it's now basically abandoned. Where you can still buy it off of his website, but it's it's completely unsupported now. Um, and the other and I. Anyways, and the other thing, the other change that happened was that uh, with with each consecutive update until the last one, the D the source code was slowly locked away behind encryption. And so there's there's probably easy ways you could unlock it if you had the right tools. Like for example, I'm pretty sure that if you have like NPP crypt, uh, the NPP crypt plugin into your Notepad in, uh, installed with your Notepad plus plus, and you could you could probably use that to de to decrypt the source code if you knew the the password that was that was that was linked with the the encrypted code but you'd have to figure out the password first so there's you know you'd have to someone would have to put in the you know it'd be cool if someone would put in the effort to uh you know unlock you know 
hack the source code, unlock it, and distribute it to everybody. Because then, with it, because without access to the source code, there are certain things that the community can't do, certain bugs they can't fix, certain issues they have to work around. Um, because the the game, you know, it isn't perfect, um, and there's only so much they can do without access to the core source code. You know, there's the source code at the core of the of the game, and so some problems are just persistent and unfixable at this point without access to the source code. But the Mono community has done a heck of a lot for Strike Fighters 2, so it is very good, and a lot of this content is act is just completely free. And so, if you do get Strike Fighters, what you want to do is, uh, if you, and you want to mod the game, you know, go look for uh, CombatAce.com. They have their own forums where you can learn how to mod the game yourself and do all kinds of things, uh, where you can ask for help. And they've also got a download section where you, where they have uh, several thousand individual downloads uh, across a wide v variety of add-ons for the for just Strike Fighters 2. And so that is, and there is a, de you, you do have, there, there is something of a paywall. You can only download five files per day without getting a paid subscription. Um, but the paid subscription helps support the website. And, you know, so, and if you want to, you can just slow down your downloading, not download as many files per day, just five, five a day. And you, you should, you, you can do it, but, you know, you, you can just download as many as you want, only, but only if you get a paid subscription that helps support the website. Anyways, and uh, there's not as many members active as there as there was in the past, I don't think, but there's still several prominent members who, with a lot of know-how, that are still active. Um, so it's a good place to go, and there's a lot of helpful articles that, you know, you that you can find with, by searching through the forums to, you know, that, where you can learn about how to do things yourself. And so that's pretty cool. Anyways, so, uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty good game. Um, I like it. Um, like I said, the price point is a bit of a uh, mood killer when you're, when you're first looking at getting into it. But uh, I, I think that uh, it does have a lot of potential for, for people who want a, a flight sim, that, uh, a combat flight sim that's less complex than DCS World and a little easier to fly and, you know, and... For the for the price point, it, it's decent. It's, it's not the best deal, but it's a decent price for the content. It's I think it's a decent price for the content you're getting. I, I really think TK should just lower the price to sixty bucks for the entire module. He'd, he'd sell a lot more copies that way, if you ask me. And you know, but anyways, um, uh, I may eventually do a series where I'm flying aircraft from DCS World. I do have some aircraft. I I do have the uh, Flaming Cliffs 3, Hornet, and uh, Black Shark 2 modules for DCS World, and I can fly the Black Shark 2 relatively well. I'm actually decent with helic. I'm actually decent with helicopters in DCS World, but with air, with like jet fighters and stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I need a lot of practice because DCS World is a lot more complex than Strike Fighters, and my like my only real experience before picking up, you know games like Strike Fighters and DCS was was Ace Combat on on the PS2 and, and that was that did not give an easy transition. Mm. So yeah. Anyway, so that's Strike Fighters and uh, uh, I think DCS World is a good game, but I really do like Strike Fighters because it's it's one of the very few games that that is still available that you that where you can fly a wide variety such a wide variety of aircraft. Um with that are you know very beautifully modeled not not you know not to the same fidelity as dcs but they're still very nicely modeled and you can fly a wide variety of aircraft from the 1940s and 50s all the way up to uh the 1990s and even 2000s depending on which which airplanes you're getting from mods and things like that so uh it's one of the few games left where you where you have such a wide variety of aircraft to fly and that focuses on the sit on uh, and it's one of the few combat sims that has a sim that is more as is a sim light instead of a study sim and i i think dcs world could do a lot to learn about how to increase their player base by you know giving kind of a sim light function a proper sim light function based on stri based on strike fighters um to 
you know, to draw in newer players. So, you know, players who don't want to operate the full fidelity systems, they can just mess around with, you know, the sim light versions and, and, you know, have a grand old time, you know, I mean, if you can do it without hurting your, your main customer base and it's just an, ex and if it's not, you know, replacing the original content, it's just an expansion on it, you know, I think it's worthwhile, you know, because you're expanding your customer base and, and bringing in more money that you can use to work on, a, on different projects. But anyway, so yeah, that's Strike Fighters. That's that's my opinion of it. And uh, now that you've listened to me rant for so long, you know, I'll I'll bid you adieu. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>